Talking Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management. Great to see you. Great to see you, Nicole. So we have so much going on. Uh, I want to talk about some different sectors with you, including yeah. the banks and tech, uh, which we've seen some of the numbers already. But first, talk about China, which is something that you are watching very closely. Yes, I'm definitely with China a lot right now, especially because their GDP numbers came in better than expected last yes. quarter. Um, their exports were up. And if you think about it, they're one of the only central banks in the world that's stimulating their economy. So I think that's starting to pay off. And when China does well, the rest of the world does well, and which means that I think global growth will probably pick up from where it is right now. Are you concerned when China slows, the rest of the world slows? Well, I think we've already had that because China right. did slow and the rest of the world did slow. So that's kind of right. like the rear view mirror. So I think okay. we have to start thinking about what's going to happen moving forward. So you think a deal comes in, right? I mean, it's all sort of priced in, isn't it? I don't know if it's priced in, but I mean, the world is definitely more you know, optimistic about that. I think when you finally get the deal, that certainty is in the market. Markets love certainty, and that could push the market even higher. Quick on Europe. Quick thought on Europe. Um, I'm a big fan right now because the same thing. I think everyone's been so negative. In fact, I think most money managers were most negative on Europe this month, and I'm a contrarian. So I think everyone's looking at how slow the growth has already become and not looking at the future where, again, if China picks up, the world picks up, that could be very good for Europe, especially because valuations are so cheap there. So you think that the bar is just set too low overall on stocks, on the global story. So let's get to some of them. You, you were breaking down some of the banks, right? We've heard from the banks, many yes. of them. Um, what is your takeaway so far? Well, the banks came in hot. Um, earnings were very good across the board for the banks. And I think even in this interest rate environment where it's hard, harder for them to make money, the fact that they did so well is a really good litmus test for how strong the economy is and how strong this earnings season already is. Was there any bank in particular that when you looked at the numbers, you were really impressed? I mean, I love JP Morgan. I think they're one of the best run banks in the country. Um, and I think, you know, right now at a multiple of 11 times forward earnings versus the S&P at 17 times forward earnings. I mean, it's just right. great value. I mean, you, you got to love Jamie Dimon and his management team. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about technology? I mean, this has been a, a favorite. There was a time that Fang just ruled the world. Now, with, and now I think that the gains that we've seen in 2019 have been much more broad based, but technology is back in many ways. So what are you thinking? Overbought? It, I mean, okay, short term, you probably could keep continue to go higher here, but yeah, it's the most overcrowded trade right now as of April. Again, just like Europe is unloved, uh, tech's becoming too loved, and I think at some point, I mean, the Nasdaq trades at a 20 times forward earnings valuation. Mm -hmm. um, I have to think, yes, the value is not great there. Short term, maybe, but long term, I would not be a big, big fan of technology. So you like you like some of the banks. Is there anything else? You had a quick thought on energy. Um, I do. I think all the major integrated uh, companies like Exxon, Chevron, ConocoPhillips, all of those look very good here because I also think, again, it all goes back to China. Right. With China strengthening, that means that global economies are strengthening, which is good for oil prices, but also that raises interest rates and cost of capital goes up for these energy companies, which means prices have to go higher for them to even be profitable. So I think that's going to be another catalyst for energy. And you think oil prices actually can go a little higher, right? Oil, the commodity itself. Right. has room to the upside, right? Uh, I do. I mean, it's already up 40% this year if you're talking about right. West, West, Texas, uh, West Texas crude. But also, if you look at energy stocks, they're only up about 20%. So right. there's a big disparity between how well oil, the commodity, is done versus the actual company. Do so you want to make a comment on Anadarko Chevron Occidental? I mean, it's getting very interesting, right? Those M&A deals coming in um, and you know, bidding up the prices like that, just another reason why the energy sector is definitely heating up. And then the Fed, do you think the Fed's an important part of this year? I mean, the Fed is always backward looking, in my opinion. They're always a little late to the game. But I think, again, if interest rates start to go up around the world and you start to see the economy pick up a little bit more than most economists think, I think the Fed's going to be in a position to actually start talking about raising rates again. And I don't think the world is really pricing that in yet. I'm sure you try and take a very unique approach to wealth management. So a lot of people have had a lot of money sitting on the sidelines. They were very spooked by December. Yes. What are you telling them to take their profits or take some money off the table or invest now for the next 10 years? What, What's your, what's your thought? Yeah, so I think I'm always a contrarian by nature. Um, and whatever the public is doing, you always want to do the opposite. And I think the fact that almost $80 billion came out of the markets while it was going up probably speaks to the market probably has room to move on the upside. But mm -hmm. I think you have to be smart here. I think re-diversifying into, we talked about Europe, emerging markets where valuations are cheaper is a much smarter long-term play than just being a U.S.-centric portfolio. Right. All right. Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management.